on that story. We can speak to Seth Lewis, Professor of Journalism at the University of Oregon, who published a study last month about Google News. Professor, good to talk to you. I suppose whether you like President Trump or not, whether you agree with the president or not, he's right in the sense that no algorithm is actually neutral, is it? And because uh, they're generally kept secret, for because they're intellectual property, for business reasons they're kept secret, they are open to conspiracy theories. Right. I think that's one of the key challenges here. One of the key tensions is that by their nature, they are black boxed uh, to us. I mean, if we knew how they worked, then there'd be a lot of gaming systems. So clearly they want to avoid that type of scenario. Um, but as a result, it means that it, 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 that opacity kind of leaves room for people then for speculation and conjecture. And unfortunately for conspiracy theories on the part of President Trump and others. Um, so you know, it's, it's a we should be talking about the influence and power of algorithms in our everyday lives, but this is not the way to have a discussion. A lot of people will be aware of some personalization, I think, even if they haven't asked for it. You know, if you regularly use research or information from particular sources, you get a lot more search returns from those particular sources. Right. I mean, I, you know, the way that I, I think a lot of people sometimes misunderstand how Google search works and just that it doesn't capture all of the internet and that it certainly prioritizes certain things over others based on uh, the history of sites, based on linking patterns, which sites have more incoming links than others. And so um, you know, we've, we, we've conditioned ourselves to thinking that Google is this key source of information and kind of a, almost like a university where we can learn. But the problem is, of course, it's, if that's the only place we go, we leave ourselves in kind of a vulnerable situation where we may or may not actually be finding uh, the kind of information that can help us make the sort of decisions we need. So well, again, we need a kind of scrutiny and, and a critique of these algorithms, but at the same time, uh, to sort of assume that there is some conspiracy of left-wing bias is to, is to sort of go into a direction that is not particularly helpful and isn't really accurate whatsoever. And yet, the president is clearly agitated about this. He was tweeting about it before 5.30 in the morning, Washington time. He's warned the tech giants they have to be careful. What are the chances, do you think, of an attempt at regulation? There's no real uh, sort of threat of short-term regulation of these types of platforms. I think this falls into the category of a number of things where the president has, has threatened things and asked for things to be fixed, but we're not likely to see anything happen in the short or even medium term. I do think that um, the the, probably the bigger concern here is that it could lead toward Google overcorrecting. And if we look at what happened to Facebook in 2016, it came under criticism from conservatives around similar issues of bias. And in the end, Facebook made some decisions that actually undermined its ability to, um, you know, to, to, to police its content. In other words, because of decisions that Facebook made, it allowed itself to become more easily uh, taken by, by far right and other kind of efforts toward misinformation in the run-up to the election. So the problem here could be Google make a similar mistake. Professor, thank you very much indeed. Happy to be here.